Hey everybody, this is Robbie Mack, and this video is for a buddy of mine, Mike Wiley, who's been struggling with installing a bootloader on his Ender 3. He has a Mega 2560, does not have an Uno, which is a similar problem that I ran into about this time last year. So I revisited how I went about flashing my Ender 2s and my CR10s, and this is a tutorial for him. This process should work for most Creality boards. I can't verify it on newer generation boards like the CRX or the CR10S models. Um, however, some of the older boards will have a voltage regulator USB jumper located on the left side. I've highlighted it in pink here. If you have one, go ahead and move that jumper over to the USB pins. And you'll also notice that this board has an AT Mega 1284P chip on it and that is highlighted in blue kind of in the center of the board and another important note is the ISP header over on the right hand side which is highlighted in yellow uh, I will touch on that uh, shortly I remove the case from the Ender 2 uh, make sure the power is off and I go ahead and I swap that jumper it's a little tight with my fat fingers but you can go ahead and manage to move that jumper over And I can go ahead and plug in the USB cord. And it's a bit difficult to see, but eventually it'll pop up here and it will show you that the printer currently has firmware on it. And in this case, I use a TH3D's 1.1.7 uh, firmware. And there it is, finally popped up. So you can see that the printer actually functions in this, in this manner in terms of uh, having firmware on it already. So I mentioned the ISP header on the Creality board earlier, and that's shown in the near the bottom of this picture. We're going to have to create a wiring harness that's going to connect the pins from the Creality board to the Mega. And the pinouts are shown below. Um, it's pretty much the same wiring as Uno, and really it's one-to-one -one relationship from one header to the next, with the exception of the reset pin on the Creality board. We'll uh, connect a pin 10 um, up on the... Uh, upper header on the Mega 2560. Uh, there are a bunch of resources you can always Google um, the pinouts and more get more information on that if, if you so desire. And so here's my custom harness I made on the Mega and then the other end will plug directly into the Ender 2. Once that's done, we'll plug in the USB cable into the Mega 2560, and you'll get some power lights showing on it, and we should verify that we have power on the Ender 2 board. And the screen should come up, and it will still show the firmware that's currently loaded on that machine. Now, I've heard a rumor that newer versions of Arduino uh, may not work, and uh, in this instance I'm using uh, 1.6.1 and but the big thing is that you're gonna need a Nick Gammon sketch uh, which is shown here I put a link to Nick Gammon sketch in the description below you go ahead and open his AT Mega board programmer INO file and that will open up Arduino you choose tools the board is gonna be an Arduino Mega or Mega 2560 Go back up to tools, make sure your processor is set to AT Mega 2560. We're going to go ahead and verify the port is on the Arduino Mega. And then we want to make sure that the programmer is set to AVRISP Mark II. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and click upload. It's going to compile, verify, and then it will upload it to the Mega 2560 board. As long as we don't get any errors and we verify that it's done uploading we can move on to the next step and it says it's done uploading no errors are showing up so here's where it's different than the UNO you're gonna go up to the tools and you're gonna choose serial monitor we're gonna verify um, that we have both NL and CR as well as 115 200 baud and then we're going to put in a capital G and hit the send command. And that's going to copy the bootloader to 
to our board. No errors found. It was verified. Everything's good. And we'll verify that the Ender 2 LCD screen is now blank because there is no more firmware on this machine. We can go ahead and disconnect the Mega 2560 and all the wiring. And we'll go ahead and proceed to the next step of uploading firmware. But your bootloader is on here, so now it's a very simple matter of uploading firmware. After the Mega 2560 is disconnected, we can go ahead and plug in a USB cable connecting the uh, Ender to the PC. You'll note the screen is still blank. There's no firmware on it. And so we'll proceed to uploading firmware to it again. Because I wiped uh, the firmware off and I want to go back to the firmware that was originally on it because I'm happy with that firmware, I'm going to go through Tim's process of, of how that was uploaded and in my case he actually provided a hex file and so I'm going through the motions of setting up the COM port, the baud rate, and uh, the board type for the processor on the uh, Melzi board which is I believe the AT Mega 1284P and then I will load the hex file that was on there originally and just flash it back onto the board um, Obviously you can go about using Arduino and customizing your firmware and uploading it that way. There's a multitude of ways to do it. In this particular instance I just want to go back to what I originally had. I was happy with that run in the way that it was. And since I wiped it I now need to put it back on there and this is the fastest and easiest way for me to do that. So you go ahead and hit go. It will write it. It will verify it. And then it will, should end up coming back up with the showing the firmware on it after it's done writing to the to the board and sure enough now that it's done I see that I now have firmware back on there again everything's back to where it was and I just need to go in and change my EEPROM settings so at this point we'll unplug it from the uh, computer we'll put our jumper back to the voltage regulation position and I'll put the cover back on and get ready to print again hopefully that helps you